Hello, lovely human, Jen Foxbot here. Welcome back to STEM Bites, the show where we answer your seemingly simple questions about science, tech, engineering, and math. All right. Today, I'm really excited because our delightful friend, Electric Elephant, scooch, 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 Electric Elephant is here to ask a question. All right, Electric Elephant, what is your question for us today? Well, I'm a little embarrassed by it. That's totally okay, Electric Elephant. All questions are welcome. Well, sometimes I just don't know what I don't know. And I would like to know more about electronics and circuits, but I'm not really sure what to ask. Maybe we could do a fun little experiment or something? I would be delighted and honored, Electric Elephant. I am so happy and proud that you are brave enough to be upfront with me about just wanting to learn more in general and not really knowing what exactly to ask. Because heck yeah, it can be super intimidating when you're trying to learn a new subject and there are so many things to start with and there's all these terms. You're like, what is all this stuff? Ah, too many things. So yeah, let's have a little bit of fun and make some circuits and see what we can learn. But to do that, we are going to have to go to the laboratory. Yes. All right. So come along with me to the lab and let's get exploring some circuits. Yay. Welcome to my lab, my delightful friend. I'm so happy that you're here to join me and Electric Elephant to learn more about circuits. Let's start with the basics. What is a circuit? Well, a circuit uses electricity to do something usually useful or sometimes just fun, like turn on a light, move a motor, turn a speaker on, or take in inputs as well, like read in sensor data. Maybe it's from a microphone or maybe it's from a light sensor to turn on a solar path light or something like that. So we can use electricity as a form of energy to do all sorts of really, really, really cool things, both practically and just for funsies. So, what does a circuit need? A circuit is made up of three main things. A power source, like a battery, or maybe a solar panel. And then your circuit also needs something to use the electricity. So that's number two. So a component or a part that uses the electricity. So this could be a light, it could be a sensor, it could be a motor, something that takes the energy from the power source and converts it into some type of other energy output. And then you also need a way to transmit or move the electrical energy from the power source to your part. And so enter wires, yeah! So wires are made up of metal and metal is a particularly good conductor of electricity, meaning you don't lose that much energy along the way from your power source to your sink source or the thing that is using electricity. Sometimes we call that a sink because it's slurping up energy. Okay, so this is a battery holder or a little coin cell battery. Oh, I'll pop it over, open maybe and show you the battery inside. There we go, Wee. Oh, and look, yep, see electrical thing? Yeah, little tiny coin cell battery and handy because this case has wires attached to it. So I can make a circuit by using my hands, just like so. Look at that, it lit up, because I have the three main things. I have my battery, oh, black thing. I have my, the thing that is using the electricity, and then I have the wires to transmit the energy that is stored in the battery with chemical interactions and uh, to the light, so that the battery energy is now uh, traveling through the wires, going into the light, doing some different, uh, doing some work. And then we see that uh, kind of energy conversion as light. So cool. I'm kind of simplifying here, but you get the gist. So that's a circuit. That's pretty much it. From there, you can add all sorts of other cool things. Like for example, if you had a light sensor to this circuit, you could control when the light turns on and off. You could also add a switch so that uh, instead of having to hold the wires, um, or you know, break the circuit with your hands, 
you can, you know, like a light switch, you just turn the light on and off at a whim. The last thing that I will end and show you with, um, end with and show you, <laughs> language is funny sometimes, is this handy dandy tool, which is used for prototyping circuits. This is called a breadboard. And I love the name because it actually came from the fact that folks that used to build circuits would actually use wooden cutting boards. They would steal them from the kitchen, they would hammer nails, they would wrap wires, they would get their power source, their batteries, and then they would get their components, and then they would uh, use the wire wrapping to connect everything and be like, huzzah, I made a circuit on this wooden cutting board. And the people in the kitchen would be like, excuse me, you're taking all of my wooden cutting boards and I need to make dinner, can you not please? So enter the plastic breadboard. Underneath, I'm not gonna rip, well, maybe I'll just show you a little sneak preview. I'm not gonna rip the whole thing. But underneath, you have effectively wires that connect the holes in the breadboard so that you can more easily build circuits and you don't have to sit here awkwardly holding the wires all the time. So if I try to get this right, the breadboard is situated to make it easy to connect lots of different types of components or just different lots of components to the same energy source. Or even this one has two power rails for two different power sources. So I can then use the breadboard to build my circuit like a so. And what is super cool is if I want to, I can add more lights. Oh, what's up? I can add more lights. Cause lights are pretty, let's add a green light. Oh, look at that! Something funky happened! I added a green light and the white lights turned off. What if I take the green light out? Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can angle it a little better so you can see. Green light in, white lights go out. Green light steals all of the energy. What? Ooh, okay, that happens with green light, but can I add another white light? Why do you think that's happening? Ooh some sneaky shenanigans are going on with this electricity. Oh, a rainbow light. Oh, that was a surprising one. Amazing. Okay, rainbow light dimmed the other two lights a little bit, but it didn't entirely steal all of the energy. Interesting. Okay, well, I like that one. We're going to leave it in. Let's try a blue light. I wonder if it'll do something similar to the green light. Oh, okay, blue light seems to be okay. Let's try the green light again and see if something funky is going on here. Nope, green light? Nope, stole the energy again. Hmm, intriguing. What about a red light? I got red and yellow left that we haven't tried. Well, yellow came first, so, oh, interesting. Okay, so yellow came on, and now the dancing rainbow light is only showing red and green versus blues and oranges okay okay interesting so yellow and green cause some funky shenanigans to go on they are energy hogs apparently oh interesting and red also did the same thing all right so i'm saying it's an energy hog but is that correct what do you think is going on why my dear friend do the red yellow and green lights cause the other colors to turn off. I really like this dancing light circuit and how this rainbow light is making the other two lights dance too. Very technical term, dancing lights. Okay, so I have a little question for you, if you didn't guess already, that I would like you to hypothesize about in the comments. Why do you think that these three colors are affecting the lights, and by these three colors, I mean these three colors, red, yellow, and green, are affecting the, the brightness of the other lights. And also, if we want to add a switch to our circuit, like this adorable little push button, how would we do that? Stay tuned for the next episode in STEM Bites, where we will dig more into the nuances of circuits and maybe figure out how to add a switch to our circuit so that we don't have to manually go like this. Huh. Okay. <laughs> Such a great question, Electric Elephant. I am so tickled by this stuff. Oh, also, um, yes, if you'd like to learn more, I always forget about this, but I wrote a book on all this shenanigans, so check it out. 
um, it goes through all of the all of the details and will actually teach you the hardware side of computers, like how the original computers were built. Super cool. I'm, I'm really stoked about the projects in that book. So highly recommend to check it out if you would like to learn more about electronics. Or honestly, if you're just curious about electricity and are a little intimidated, it's meant for beginners and it is very silly and fun. All right, please let me know if you have any questions about any of the stuff that we covered today, or if there are other topics that you would like to learn about across science, tech, engineering, and math. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Bye.